Afternoon headlines are brought to you by Palm Coast Ford, your hometown dealer. Hello everyone, I'm Jared Malden with your afternoon headlines for Tuesday. After her daughter was killed in a car accident last July, a Palm Coast woman has now filed a lawsuit against the owner of a gas station and the father of the driver of the vehicle. Kathleen Smith's daughter, 17-year-old Meredith Smith, was killed in an accident on I-95 in Daytona Beach last July while riding in a truck with 18-year-old Lane Burnsed, who also died. Smith is suing the Sunoco gas station where the two stopped in Bunnell, where her daughter was able to purchase and consume alcohol. Smith is also suing the boy's father, James Burnsed, for wrongful death, saying he is liable for his son's negligence for driving under the influence of marijuana though test results after the accident came back negative for the substance. Smith is asking for $15,000 in damages from James Burnsed and two counts of negligence against Seneco in the amount of $15,000 each. Now we turn our attention to an Observer exclusive. We recently sat down with Representative Travis Hudson, who stopped by the Observer offices for a roundtable discussion. In part one of this two-part series, Hudson talks about tax cuts for manufacturers, teacher pay raises, cleaning out old bills, and a program that could include Flagler County students in the lawmaking process. Tax cut for manufacturers. Mm -hmm. um, I know that was uh, something that, you know, uh, was pretty popular. Right. Yeah, right. So can you tell us, you know, the basic details of what that was about and what your point of view was on it? When you talk about manufacturers specifically, uh, Governor Scott was thinking stuff like Boeing. You're talking about big, big, heavy uh, heavy industrial users, so so planes, maybe tractors, we have Caterpillar ring powers here, so stuff like that. So that's the manufacturing side. Um, and we ended up passing it, uh, again, I think it's a great thing um, because it promotes that incentive package. It's, it's promoting business into the state of Florida. We can now go compete with, with all the other states, and I believe we are the only state in the southeastern U.S. that had this tax. So again, we were handicapping ourselves. Um, so it passed in the Senate, and it came to the House, and we passed it um, in the House. I believe it was a split vote. Uh, I think it was 76, 44, 45. Um, and hopefully it's going to his desk to be a law now. So that's, that's where we're at. We, we decided to go with the merit pay. Um, and it's just coming from the private sector, you know, if you're going to give your employees a raise, let's give the employees, you know, we can give everybody across the board X, we can give the better ones a little bit more. And with the merit pay, some of the better ones will get a little bit more. Okay. Um, so what we decided to do was basically to say, look, the teachers that are being highly effective or, or effective, we'll, we'll give them a raise. The teachers that they weren't that great, and, and I don't think there are that many out there, but may not get that raise. But it's just like looking at business from a private sector standpoint, uh, specifically in here. If you're going to give a raise to your company because you have bonuses, you're going to give it to the ones that, that overperformed and overachieved. Yeah, there's a two levels. So we've, we've got the merit pay based, and then it's effective or highly effective. Um, and then we actually changed at the last appropriation stop, and we changed in our appropriations that says if the teachers have worked out their collective bargaining with their local school board, and they have a merit-based pay system, come July 1st when we allocate that money, it can go right to the teachers. What were the committees that you served on? Okay, the five committees were education, that was the full committee. Then I was on criminal, uh, criminal justice subcommittee. I was on the government operations and appropriations subcommittee. I was on the rules and repeals subcommittee, and then the economic development and tourism subcommittee. Yeah, the rules and repeals subcommittee, and what that committee does, and it's one of my favorites as well, um, what that committee does is we look at laws that have been passed four, five, six years ago, if they never have been implemented, we automatically take them right off the books. We actually stripped 700 laws this year in, in that one committee um, that were just no activity to them. And we do that every year, you know, because there are some bills that seem like a good idea. They get passed, the, the, the department looks at it, no one takes advantage of it, you know, and then they, you know, it just kind of sits dormant. Um, and you don't want something that's been there for 30 years that somebody automatically starts using. I mean, if it, if it hadn't been used, you know, there's a reason for it. So we get rid of it. Yes, we are, um, I have a meeting with the principals tomorrow. We are going to do a mock legislation. The, the goal, uh, let, me, let me preface that. The goal is to do a mock legislation here with our high school students. Let them sit on two different committees. I want to split uh, them up with Palm Coast and Matanzas, kind of split their, their, their minds up and what their areas of interest are, um, and kind of have a very uniform, unbiased group with two committees and let them run their own laws. 
and let's pass them through our committees. And maybe it takes uh, maybe a month or two of, of planning and you're, doing. You're, you're asking them to go through the process. They're going to go through the process, and whoever, uh, whoever, gets, whoever wins, whatever committee, um, and or we'll bring them together for an actual house. It gets elected out of their yep. process. Yeah, whatever bill gets elected and finalized, we will file for the state house next year. And the goal would to try to be if the kids can make them come up there and we'll present them in front of committees, actually on the state house. But I want to have a bill that the, the, the children of Flagler wrote. Uh, whatever their idea is, I'm not going to have any input in it. Um, and we'll file it and we'll run it. So I'm saving one bill slot for, for the students of Flagler County. You can watch the second half of the interview with Representative Hudson on tomorrow's headlines. Now, taking on surf and sand for a good cause. The third annual May Day Memorial Surf Classic was held this past weekend. The surfing contest was organized in part by Miss Flagler County, Haley Watson, to promote awareness of heart disease. Watson's mom died in 2006 at the age of 48. 89 surfers competed this year with Halifax Health on board as a sponsor. Proceeds from May Day benefited the hospital's efforts in disease education and prevention. For a full list of winners in each competition, log on to our website. Lastly, more than 600 students dressed to the nines for their junior-senior proms this past weekend. FPC High School's prom was located at Hilton Daytona Beach where students danced the night away. Willie Gardner and Naomi Thomas were crowned this year's king and queen. Matanzas held its prom at the Hammock Dunes Club where Jimbo Murphy and Kay Lynn Pitts were crowned as king and queen. And those are your afternoon headlines for Tuesday. For news anytime, log on to our website at palmcoastobserver.com and like us on Facebook. I'm Jared Malden and from everyone here at The Observer, Thanks for watching. Hi folks, Don York, General Manager of Palm Coast Ford, and I'd like to invite you down to check out Ford's all new fuel efficient lineup, like the all new C-Max Energy. At Palm Coast Ford, go further for less. Palm Coast Ford, your hometown dealer.